Michelle from Serenity Heels here. I wanted to show you some of the handmade art brushes that I've been playing with and I also wanted to do a bit of a test on some of the marks that they make today. So I've got a few different types of handmade brushes. Some have um, just fibre materials. So this is a Casuarina bush found it in the forest. It's just one of these. Um, just pulled a bunch of the um, leaves off and turned it into something that might make a nice mark. I've got lots of shrubbery and foliage to use. So this is one of the types of grasses that we get here on the farm. This is another type of grass. These both are grass. Um, I guess the dry ends of the grass right near the roots so that they might make an interesting um, mark and a similar one I really like this one it was kind of you can see where the roots of the grass and I've just chopped off the um, top bits to make a nice potentially a nice mark maker this is a bit of bamboo which you probably recognize some other types of fiber material so this is from the Livingstonia palm it's quite fragile so I'm expecting it might drop a lot of stuff into my paint old man's beard which is just a lichen that grows on the fence posts around here. So I just put it onto a stick um, and more fiber, some feathers, another, this is actually material that came wrapped around a bouquet of flowers. So I'm not sure what it's gonna be like. Um, sometimes these fiber materials are prettier as a stamp than a mark making, you know, in that, as that kind of mark making. And this is some of the stringy barks and I'm interested to see if these ends make a half decent mark. And I also just whittled a bunch of sticks to see, you know, that I might make some drawing implements. I have a really nice whittling knife. Let me just grab it. Here's my whittling knife made by an artist here in Australia, beautiful. Um, timber handle and it's just the perfect thing for whittling these sticks into something that might actually make a lovely mark so if you don't have a whittling knife maybe a Stanley knife would do some of the handles that I've used I just got a branch from the forest and cut pieces you know chunks of the branch and drilled a big hole into the base oh, I just I found a couple more mark making tools I was going to try this old bit of rope I might give that a shot so here's my branch and I've cut lengths, cut lengths and then popped a hole drilled a big hole in the middle so I can sort of put bits of my material down and I haven't been too fussy about how I've secured them because I don't know that they're really going to be that long term so I've wrapped a lot of these with um, what is a linen or waxed cotton thread that I use which is actually out of my jewelry um, materials and it's got a good grip so it hangs on and it provides a bit of friction so I can just sort of pop these in but I do also expect to be able to use say a glue gun um, and the reason I was thinking of using a glue gun is I've actually read that you can use the glue gun when it when it um, cools it dries hard and then you can come back and if you want to pull your brush material out of your handle, you can do that using the, um, you know, just a, a hairdryer. This is another little one. I've wanted to try one of these for ages. So I just got a scrap bit of timber, drilled some holes and put some old brush heads into it. So I did want to try that. Um, of course, the Banksia, every good Australian needs to have a play with a Banksia brush. Um, I've also been using these bamboo sticks as handles scrap timber this is just a block of wood that came out of the woodworking bucket if you like and i just drilled a couple of holes and it looks like a potato <laughs> but anyhow we'll see it actually sits quite nicely in the hand so we'll see how it goes all right so let's get underway let's have a play now that you've seen all my various bits and pieces i wanted to have a bit of a play with what marks they make Right, so let's get underway. I'm just using some sketch pad paper. So it's not very heavy. It's maybe 110 GSM. I just got a bunch of sheets because I really just want to rattle through and see some different marks. I'm going to be using 
an Atelier Free Frollo just because it's got lots and lots of um, movement and I'm not going to be trying to scrudge across a page with some fibrous material when I've got a really heavy body paint. Just going to use a Stay Wet palette and put a bunch of paint down. And get underway. The reason I want to use the free flow is because I feel like I might be able to drag some of these paint brushes through the paint rather than you know trying to scoop it up. So I'm going to use the potato first. Just really loving. love the fact of this um, repeatability. I want to pull that scrappy bit off. Oh, there we go. Part of the brush comes off. It's got a really fine, delicate, scrungy mark, which I'm liking. Okay. Try the old man's beard, the lichen. Yeah, I like that. What a great texture. Oh, I could do this for hours. As the paint load lessens, it almost feels like a pencil drawing. It's so light and delicate. All right, paintbrush number two. Arena. And as you can see, it's popping off all over the place, but never mind. Look, look, I really like that. I really like that mark. Okay, let's keep going. Now I'm going to try, and this is the embroidery cotton. So I'm keen to have a look at what this does. Wondering if it might be better even with some a kind of thinner paint again, like ink. There's something very random about this mark, but it's quite strong, isn't it? Like you can get a lot of paint into the, the head of that cotton brush. Let's try something else. Let's have a bit of a go at adding a bit more paint. might make everything a bit more messy. I really like the way you can get the sort of the lines of the threads coming through when you add more paint to the length of it. I'm just gonna, oh yeah, that's good. That changes, oops, missed. The paper. Love that. That's quite heavy with paint so I'm now wondering if I'm going to soak that in water and see if I can clean that up. Let's try some of these drawing sticks. I really quite like the, I quite like that single line you know it's a very it's a very tentative line, isn't it? And I'm using my left hand, but I do a lot of drawing with my left hand. I 
really like that line. I think. Okay, so that's my drawing stick, of which I've got many, but I think I'll just try out that one. I'm gonna try some of this stringy bark. So this is just a piece of bark that was on the forest floor. It's quite incredible how much it's hanging on to the paint. Mm, okay, so like that, like that one, that's pretty cool. All right, next. Okay, so I want to try this guy. I don't know how successful we're going to be. It's very satisfying. <laughs> this is, so what I'm thinking of with these is collage papers. So I really want to get stuck in and make some collage paper with these patterns as well as using it directly. Wow, I could do that for hours. Okay, so I really like that one too. What else have we got? Okay, let's do Mr. Banksia. Mm. So there is a degree of destruction that goes on with the brushes as they're going through there, doing their job. So maybe I need to collect and then make some collage papers. Do this other bit of stick material. I might get something similar to what we've already had, but let's have a, let's have a look. Lots to like. Okay, put that one up there. Let's have a play with my feather paintbrush. feathers. Last couple to go. We'll play with the so I fear that this one just looks kind of funky but I'm not sure it's going to be that good a mark maker but let's find out. <laughs> I shouldn't judge before I have a go should I really? Oh it's going to make mess everywhere. Oh it feels good to splodge. I feel like I need to guide these two, which is probably not the objective. I wonder if I just use one. Too controlled. Yeah. All right, well, that is what it is. I feel like the curves and the look of this thing is sexier than the market makes but it was worth giving it a shot this is the floristry fiber and it's quite it's actually quite robust it's it's better than the um livingstonia palm it's sort of got more integrity it's less soft Is another good way to make a grass type of texture. Pity I don't do realistic. Mind you, these things are awesome in abstracts as well. Ooh, I like it when it's got a bit more of a load. That's nice. Okay, I like that and I've got more of that. Looks like I'm about to break it. Oh well, <laughs> it's always 
worth pushing these things. All right, there it goes. I broke it. <laughs> now I've done it. Okay, I can reuse that. And um, my last little bit, I might as well just use up this space. This is another bit of um, stringy bark that I got out of the forest. It's quite a bit softer than the yellow bark, the yellow stringy. So this is one of the white stringies and I feel like it's very fibrous, very soft. All right. I'm sure I can have a bit more of a play, lots of dabbing. All right, let's call it there for now. Let's go and have a look at what we produced.